It's rarely the obvious carbs that kill our low carb diet. It's the high carb foods and drinks that we consume unknowingly. Let's go through this together and uncover the top carbohydrate rich foods and drinks that you must avoid while on a low carb diet. But before we get started, I'm Dr. Nick Zorowski and I started my natural health practice in order to help you take control of your health naturally because true health only comes naturally. Be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you don't miss any of my new natural health videos. Hey, wellness warriors, we've all made mistakes while following the low carb diet. We tend to think that these mistakes are unique to us or we're the only ones struggling, but the fact is we all screw it up. I remember when I first started my low carb journey, I was eating a lot of veggies and a friend of mine pointed out to me that the little salt packets that I was getting at the school I was going to at the time were actually full of sugar as well. They had salt and sugar in them. And then I was getting canned tomatoes, thinking I was doing the right healthy thing, only to find out that the canned tomatoes were loaded with sugar. We've all been there, it's frustrating. And after working with thousands of people, I can tell you that this frustration is not unique to you. So let's break down the top foods that we have to really watch out for. One area that catches most of us by surprise is the area of condiments and sauces. There's no doubt that condiments are a great way to add good flavors to your low carb meal. However, there's no point in making a delicious low carb meal, spending all that time on it and then covering it with that high carb sauce. When I started eating low carb, I remember that sad, sad day when I looked at the ketchup container and I looked at the barbecue sauce container and I saw how much sugar was in it. And I remember thinking to myself, well, there's no wonder I love this stuff so much. Now beyond barbecue sauce and ketchup, there's a few others that we have to watch out for. We have to watch out for sauces like sriracha. We have to watch out for teriyaki sauce. We also have to watch out for like balsamic vinaigrettes. These are some of the top ones that people make mistakes with because they're typically pretty high in sugar. Now, the reason I say watch out for them and that we don't have to avoid them altogether is because you can actually still use these. You just have to make better choices and make sure that you're getting like a sugar-free ketchup and a sugar-free barbecue sauce. And I remember after making all these discoveries, I thought to myself, well, I still love ketchup and I still love barbecue sauce. So I'm going to go to Whole Foods, Whole Foods of all places, and I'm going to find a healthy one. So as I go there, I'm looking bottle after bottle, just keep picking them up off the shelf. I'm there for like 10 minutes and finally I get really frustrated because I can't find one a barbecue sauce or a ketchup without corn syrup and full of sugar. So I go and I grab this store clerk and I said, look, I'm looking for a barbecue sauce that doesn't have sugar in it. And he goes, oh, that should be easy, you know? And I said, specifically, I wanna make sure I have one that doesn't have corn syrup in it. He's like, oh, sir, this is Whole Foods. We don't put that in our sauces here. And so he goes over and starts picking up bottle after bottle and realizes real quick that they are all loaded with corn syrup. And so my whole point in telling you that is that you have to read labels. You have to read labels so that you can make sure there's good clean ingredients, but also make sure that it doesn't have corn syrup and a whole bunch of other sugars in it. So you wanna get sugar free and we eventually did find one. I remember as a teenager going to restaurants and looking at the menu and going, why does the salad have just as many calories as the big delicious juicy cheeseburger? It can't be the onions, it can't be the tomatoes, it can't be the carrots or cucumber. What in the world could be in that salad that's causing it to have so many calories? Well, as it turns out, all these different salad dressings that you're gonna get in a typical restaurant or just kind of standard grocery store are loaded with bad ingredients, preservatives, and also a whole lot of sugar. All the different dressings that I grew up with and loved as a child, Thousand Island, Catalina, or one of my childhood favorites, which was honey mustard, are loaded with a ton of carbohydrates, a ton of sugar, and to top it off, the fats that are in them are typically vegetable oils, which are also known as bad fats. If you're going to buy a pre-made dressing, make sure that you're reading the label. It's so important. Or you can just make sure that you're buying a brand that you know you can trust. One of my favorites is gonna be like a Primal Kitchen. Now, if you wanna have a good inexpensive homemade option, you can make like a homemade Italian. Or for simplicity purposes, just use olive oil and vinegar on your salad. That's one of my favorites. Then there's the more obvious low carb diet killers that we all know, but we still need to mention. These are the cakes, the cookies, the pastas, the breads, the sodas, all the things that we know are going to kill our low carb diet. Now, if somebody is eating these things, it's typically just a matter of willpower because there's nobody that eats a candy bar and was like, hey, I didn't know that that had sugar in it. But these are all things that people struggle with. So if you're new to a low carb diet, there is a good chance that this may be a problem for you. There was this individual that I was working with and they had this one habit that they had a really hard time breaking 
groundbreaking, and it was this. They love to eat pizza on Friday night. And it was no secret as to why this was an issue because for the past 10 years of his life, he ate pizza on a Friday night. It was that one thing throughout the entire week that he just really looked forward to. And I even remember what kind of pizza it was. It was a barbecue chicken pizza. Now, he thought that you couldn't follow a low carb diet and also eat pizza at the same time, so he considered it his cheat meal. And this one thing that I taught him really changed his life. You can make an almond flour crust pizza and you can make a cauliflower crust pizza and it fits right into a low carb diet. For the more obvious low carb killers, I want you to really focus on not restricting them but finding better alternatives. If you're somebody who likes cookies, find a keto cookie. If you're somebody who likes soda, find a soda that's sweetened with stevia, monk fruit, or erythritol. We have to find substitutes and healthy alternatives to the things that we love because if we can't make this diet sustainable, then it won't last. And I know that following a low carb diet can seem a little bit tricky, but I'm gonna help you iron out all the fine details, so keep watching. Now, most of us like to snack. In fact, most of us like to snack too much, but it's this constant grazing that is causing a lot of people to have a problem with losing weight in today's society. Now, when we're following a low carb diet, we know that we can't be eating these high sugar snack bars, so we tend to go for the good stuff, but sometimes the good stuff can even catch us off guard. The snacks that I always see people get out of control with are going to be the nuts and the dried fruits. There was this lady I was working with and she was a regional sales manager for her company. So she inadvertently was on the road all the time traveling. Now she was struggling to hit some of her goals, but she was following the low carb diet and it seemed that her diet was really clean. I realized though, as she told me she was eating nuts and I you know, investigated a little bit further, that she was eating all the high carb ones. She was eating cashews, peanuts, pistachios, chestnuts, and then combining that with dried fruit and messing up her whole low carb diet. The sugar content in these dried fruits can be very similar to candy. And then not to mention all the nuts she ate were the high carb ones. And let's face it, when you sit down with a trail mix, you don't just eat like a piece or two, you eat a couple handfuls and then you just mindlessly start snacking and next thing you know, the whole bag's gone. Now, if if you're looking for a quick snack, look to raw macadamia nuts. Macadamia nuts are loaded with good fats, but they're also low in carbohydrates. They fit perfect into a low carb diet and easily can be thrown in your purse or left in your desk at work with no issues. And by the way, if you love all these different tips that I'm giving you, be sure to join my closest inner circle. That's referred to as the Wellness Warrior community. You can easily join the Wellness Warrior community by texting this number right here. I'll add you to my contacts list and then you're in. When I was younger, I remember my mom would go on diets and when she did, it was low fat food everything because there was this false ideology that if you ate fat, you would become fat. This was the ideology that was pushed by pretty much every mainstream diet and health organization that existed at the time. Now, for all of us low carb people, we know that fat tastes really good. And so make no mistake that all these foods that had the fat stripped from them, they had to make up for it in some other way. And typically the way that they made up for their bad taste is by adding a lot of sugar into them. In the food industry today, this is still a common practice. The reason that taking the good fats out is still happening is because good fats are expensive. And so after they take the good fats out, they typically load these foods up with vegetable oils and unhealthy fat and a lot of sugar in order to make them taste good. So on a low carb diet, it's very important to make sure that we skip the low fat foods and go for the high fat ones. These high fat foods are very important for our brains, our nervous system, and our entire bodily function. In fact, when we look at some of the research, what it shows is that those who eat a higher fat content diet will eat fewer calories throughout the day because they feel more satiated. So for some of us, it can be a little bit of a mind warping idea, especially if we grew up in that low fat era, but it's very important to make sure that we don't fall into the low fat trap. For most of us, waking up in the morning and having a big old glass of juice is just a normal part of life. I mean, could you ever imagine growing up, going to a restaurant and not getting a glass of juice? It's just one of those old habits that typically die pretty hard when you start following a low carb diet and try to get over it. Now, the problem with drinking these juices is because they're very high in sugar, very high in carbohydrates. You know, in our own home, we've literally never had juice in the morning for our kids, even though both my wife and I grew up like that. And the reason for that is because because for instance, a 12 ounce glass of apple juice has about 48 grams of carbohydrates in it, most of it coming from sugar. And if you look at even grape juice, that has about 60 grams of sugar in a 12 ounce serving. So this is more than soda and we definitely don't wanna be drinking this on a low carb diet. A friend of mine recently started doing a low carb diet and one of the ways that he kicked it off was by going to Whole Foods and like for the first two weeks of it, he was getting fresh pressed juices with a lot of fruit juice in it. I had to bust his bubble when he told me about it because I was like, you are not gonna get yourself in 
into ketosis drinking those juices. There's just no way. So when we're on a low carb diet, we have to remember to stick to our water. Let's just keep it really simple. A staple in almost everyone's home is going to be your pastas, your bagels, your breads, and your oatmeal. And yes, I said it's your oatmeal. This is a common one. I see a lot of people mess up on a low carb diet. For most people, you start in the morning eating carbs, you have them at lunch, and it goes all the way to dinner. I mean, think about it. Wake up in the morning, maybe you have a breakfast bagel, you have your oatmeal. Lunch comes around, you have a sandwich. And then for dinner, you have your dinner, maybe it's a meat and a veggie, but then you have some fresh bread. If you go out to a restaurant, when's the last time you went out to a restaurant for dinner and they didn't serve you fresh bread with butter? It's just a common thing. And for me, I grew up on a very carb-rich diet. I mean, I can't think of a time when I went to school and didn't have a nice white bread sandwich there waiting for me. On a low carb diet, we want to make sure that we ditch the grains. Now, the good news is, is that we can still cook. We can still cook muffins and a lot of things that are really delicious. We just have to ditch the grains in the wheat flour that we would normally cook with. Now, what we wanna do is replace that with like a coconut flour and also an almond flour. Those are great low carb options. Now, everyone knows that eating lots of green leafy vegetables is very important for any diet, especially on a low carb diet. But on a low carb diet, we have to be careful for our high starchy vegetables that could put us over the top and carb content for the day. Some of the high carb starchy vegetables that I see a lot of people go over the top with are these ones right here. It's gonna be your parsnips, your yams, it's gonna be sweet potatoes or pretty much any type of potato. It's also gonna be your cooked onions and also carrots. Now I wanna be very clear, these are healthy sources of carbs, but we just have to make sure that we're not over consuming them. There was this one individual I was working with and I basically said, you know, these are the carbs you have to avoid, these are healthy versions of carbs. And next time I talked to him, which was about four weeks later, I realized he was eating like three sweet potatoes a day. And so not the worst thing in the world, but if you're trying to follow a low carb diet, it's just not gonna allow you to get to where you wanna be with your health goals. For all the milk lovers out there, you're gonna to have to hear me out on this one. So who remembers growing up with all the Got Milk campaigns, right? There was incredible advertising pushing people to drink milk. This is so ingrained in some people's mind that I have a hard time convincing them that they don't need to drink a glass of milk every day. I mean, I almost roll my eyes anymore when patients tell me that they have to drink a glass of milk in order to keep up their calcium and their vitamin D levels in their body. Let me tell you, if you're drinking milk, in order to get calcium and vitamin D, it's a very lousy source of it. And by the way, I'm not anti-milk. I think that if you're drinking grass-fed milk and good quality sources of it and whole fat milk, it has a lot of health benefit. I mean, even myself growing up, I was always pushed that you have to drink a glass of milk at dinner in order to be healthy. However, I don't have that same viewpoint today. And if you're somebody who's following a low carb diet, you have to be careful with this because one glass of milk will have about 12 grams of carbohydrates in it or more. So we have to be really careful and remember that we don't need our daily milk. Next thing is that if you're gonna put it in your coffee, you know, putting one to two tablespoons in is not a big deal. However, we don't wanna be drinking a great big latte. Some other areas that people struggle with in a low carb diet are by drinking kombucha and beer. When I first started my low carb journey, one of the things I love to have is kombucha. I just discovered it. I heard it was so good for your gut. I had some gut issues at the time, but the problem is, is most of it's loaded with sugar. I will tell you this though, you can go to the store and you can find some really low sugar kombucha that would be acceptable acceptable in moderation on a low carb diet. Another beverage, as I mentioned, can be beer that a lot of people struggle with. There was this one guy I was working with and he literally had no problem getting rid of every bad food in his lifestyle but the one thing he struggled with was beer. Now here's the problem. A lot of these different beers are gonna have like 15 grams of carbohydrates in them, and even some of the lighter beers are gonna have as much as six grams of carbohydrates. So in general, on a low carb diet, we have to make sure that we ditch the beer. Avoid these foods and you're gonna be well on your way to a low carb diet, but what you still need to know is what foods can you eat? And I'm gonna teach you that in this video right here. The foods that you can eat and should eat while on the ketogenic diet. I'm gonna give you a whole list. So if you're going to the grocery store and you just started the ketogenic diet, you will want to have these items on your grocery list.